In this movie, we're going to consider depolarization block and anode break excitation. These are two conditions that change spike threshold and are explained by the probabilistic behavior of individual ion channels. So before considering anode break excitation and depolarization block, let's begin by considering the behavior of 10 sodium channels over time while the membrane potential is at minus 70 millivolts and is not changing. Remember that the channels flicker and the gates assume various positions over time. However, and this is the main point, only one sodium channel is open at any point in time while the membrane is at its resting potential. Next, let's take an axon and inject positive current that quickly depolarizes it from rest to a much more depolarized level that crosses its threshold for firing and thus evokes an action potential. The threshold is indicated by the red dashed line. The explanation for why the depolarization evoked an action potential is shown here. Let's follow the behavior of the 10 sodium channels beginning at rest, indicated by position 1, and then at four other time points. At rest, position 1, the channels are flickering in the same way that was shown in the previous slide where one is open, two are unavailable, but most sodium channels are in the available state and can open when the cell is depolarized. A fast injection of positive charges evokes the initial depolarization, position two, which then opens additional available sodium channels. The opening of the additional sodium channels allows additional positive charges to flow into the cell. The additional influx of positive charges then opens more sodium channels, position 3, generating the upstroke of the action potential. Those open sodium channels then bring in even more positive charges, opening even more sodium channels, the sequence ending at the peak of the action potential, position 4. All of the sodium channels then inactivate thereby closing their inactivation gates, which causes the downstroke of the action potential position 5. Of course, the repolarization of the membrane is due to the opening of voltage-gated potassium channels, which are not shown here. The opening of the potassium channels causes the efflux of positive charges, which repolarizes the membrane. The key event that triggers the entire sequence is the opening of additional sodium channels caused by the initial depolarization at position 2. That is what sets up the positive feedback for opening more sodium channels and thus the upstroke of the action potential. Next, let's consider depolarization block, the condition where a strong depolarization that would normally trigger an action potential fails to evoke an action potential. Such blockage of the action potential occurs when the membrane is very slowly depolarized, in contrast to the rapid depolarization that evoked an action potential in the previous slide. Here, positive current is injected into the cell as shown by the lower trace and the membrane potential also depolarizes as shown in the top trace. But the depolarization also emerges slowly and when it reaches a value that would normally trigger an action potential, it just continues to depolarize further without triggering the action potential. Indeed, the triggering of an action potential is blocked by the de slow depolarization, hence the term depolarization block. The reason for the blockage is that the slow depolarization progressively inactivates sodium channels. So when the membrane is depolarized to its normal threshold value, not enough sodium channels are in an available state. 
so that very few additional channels can open, and thus they cannot generate the upstroke of the action potential. The next slide both illustrates and explains these events and their consequences that create the block. So now we are going to look at the state of the same 10 sodium channels at six points in time as the membrane is slowly depolarized. We'll start at rest where most of the channels are in the available state and then go to various points in time. Let, let me show it to you and then I'll explain it to you. Okay, so we start at rest where most of the channels are in the available state. At some time point 2, the depolarization has increased slightly and opens a few more sodium channels, but the channel that was open a moment before has already inactivated. At time point 3, the membrane is slightly more depolarized, which now opens additional sodium channels. However, since the membrane potential is changing so slowly, the sodium channels that were previously open have now inactivated. And thus, the small amount of positive charge brought into the cell by the open sodium channels is not enough to initiate an action potential. The same sequence continues as the depolarization continues to slowly increase until the depolarization gets to and then exceeds the normal threshold value. So now, the reason for the failure to fire an action potential should be apparent. The reason is that each successive depolarization is reached so slowly that the sodium channels that were opened by the preceding depolarization have already inactivated. The cell doesn't fire because when it reaches its normal threshold, there are not enough available channels to open. They have all been rendered unavailable and thus cannot open to bring in the influx of positively charged sodium ions that are required to generate an action potential. So now we turn to anode break excitation sort of the yin of the yang of depolarization block. Here, the threshold is lowered by a preceding hyperpolarization. So what I'm going to show you in a moment is that you can take the cell from rest, hyperpolarize it, bring it back to rest, and boom, you generate an action potential. Watch. watch. Starts off, now you hyperpolarize, inject negative current, bring it back to rest, and bing, you got an action potential. The important feature is that the membrane potential is brought back to rest very, very quickly. Also notice that the normal threshold, the threshold that would evoke an action potential if the cell were simply depolarized from rest, is considerably higher than the new, lower threshold created by the preceding hyperpolarization. So the way anode break excitation works can be seen by following the sequential behavior of the same 10 sodium channels that we've been looking at all along. We're going to start from rest. Here, there are seven available channels, one open channel and two unavailable channels shown in purple. Next, the membrane is hyperpolarized by passing negative current into the axon. This is the first of two key events. At this point, the hyperpolarization causes many more sodium channels to become available than were available at rest. In this example, all 10 of the channels are now available. The next step is to abruptly end the injection of negative current and thereby bring the membrane potential rapidly back to rest. This small depolarization now causes more sodium channels to open than were previously open at rest, and that is the second key feature. There are more channels open here at the same membrane potential at rest than were open at rest before the hyperpolarization.
And the reason for the increased number of sodium channels is because there are more available sodium channels due to the preceding hyperpolarization than are normally available at rest. That is the second key feature, those increased influx of sodium, because the increased number of sodium channels then allows a sufficient influx of positive current carried by the incoming sodium ions to open even more sodium channels, thereby generating the upstroke of the action potential. Now the system goes into a positive feedback whereby the increased number of open sodium channels brings in even more positive charges that open even more sodium channels, which culminates at the peak of the action potential. A moment later, all the sodium channels inactivate, which together with the now open potassium, potassium channels that are not shown, causes the downstroke of the action potential, and the membrane then reverts back to its resting state. And those are the events that occur that underlie anode break excitation. To summarize, the membrane potential can change firing threshold. Normally, depolarization of the membrane leads to the opening of sodium channels. And if the depolarization is sufficiently large and fast, it causes the opening of enough sodium channels to generate an action potential as shown in the figure on the far left. Slow depolarization of the membrane, on the other hand, blocks the generation of action potentials, or at least raises the threshold for firing, because of the progressive inactivation of sodium channels, as shown in the middle figure for depolarization block. Hyperpolarization, in contrast, lowers the threshold for firing, because the hyperpolarization causes an increase in the number of available sodium channels. This phenomenon is called anode break excitation and is shown in the figure on the far right. Discharges evoked by the offset of inhibition is one way of signaling in the brain, as we shall see when we consider the retina.